required before making a kind of a presentation skills. As well as we are going to have a kind of a brief discussion on what are ethics, what are the etiquettes while handling the social media, as well as what are the interpersonal skills to improve our, uh, what are our interpersonal skills, how we can improve our interpersonal skills. So that is also we are going to discuss. And apart from that, we are going to discuss about what is copyright and plagiarism? So these things we are going to talk about. So the last half an hour, I, uh, I will be uh, keeping it for the question and answers. So in the meanwhile, if any student is having any kind of a doubt, so that student can type his question on his chat box. And later in the session, we will be talking about that. So I do not want to waste time because there are so many things we have to discuss today. So first of all, when we people will be starting up. So the first thing as we people have studied in the very first day of my lecture, I was talking about that communication. And whenever we people are talking about communication, it is something which is based on sharing a kind of an information. So here, whenever we people are working in an any kind of an organization or any kind of a workplace. So we conduct certain kind of the meetings and the meetings are the most, they are very central kind of an element in the organization. And where we sit with the people who need to take a decision which is based on a shared information and opinion. So whenever we are conducting a kind of a meeting, so whenever we are conducting a meeting, we should be aware of this kind of a fact that we should be clear with our purpose. Sometimes whenever we are working in an organization, what happens? Meetings are something which can be considered as a routine basis where or it can be a, a short kind of a meeting. So whenever we are conducting a meeting, the number of people who attend a meeting is the number of people is like six. And if we are conducting any kind of a meeting, meeting should is always a kind of a formal. We cannot hold any kind of an informal meeting because there are certain kind of an agenda which is being required whenever we are holding a meeting. So that means our idea is clear and we have to discuss those matters, those issues with certain kind of the people. And that is the only thing why we hold a meeting. Apart from this, there is one more thing which is important. Whenever we are attending a kind of a meeting, since it is something which is based on a discussion. Okay, so here our natural gestures, our eye contact, and our body language should always have a kind of a positive impact. Because the more positive we people will be, the most uh, proper impact we are going to make on the other person. So here, whenever we are talking about a meeting, so one thing we have to make few points into consideration. That means if we are arranging a kind of a meeting, how many people are attending that meeting? What is the time which is being decided for that meeting? Apart from that, where is the place of that meeting? Uh, that are the things which are being required in a meeting. So that is how we hold a meeting. Uh, then Apart from this, we have another thing. That means whenever we hold a meeting, there we give a kind of a presentation skill. So what is a presentation skill? Presentation skill is there is a thought, there is an idea which is there inside your mind and that you have to present in front of the people. So before going on a kind of a presentation, one should be aware of certain kind of the facts and the facts are that what are the points which you have to discuss. That means you have to prepare well. Then 
you have to make a note and then you have to make sure that what kind of a tone or what kind of a voice you are requiring before holding a kind of a meeting so all these things are required while we conduct any kind of a meeting or whenever we are giving any kind of a presentation so uh, in the meanwhile i will be just sharing my uh, uh, presentation uh, just give me a second and then i will continue with my lecture So is it my is it my PPT visible to all you people? Is it visible? Is it yes, yes or a no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So the main uh, point which we people are going to discuss today is first of all, uh, we are going to talk about what is copyright and what is a plagiarism. So here, uh, first of all, we will be talking about uh, this thing that what is copyright so here we will be talking about few points number one what, uh, we will be talking about what is an introduction then we will be talking about what is the brief history of a copyright then uh, what are the copyright laws in india and um, in the end we will be talking about what plagiarism is and how we what are the ways to avoid plagiarism so here see uh, what happens sometimes we publish a kind of a work or we present a kind of a work without acknowledging any person isn't it or what we do uh, sometimes we uh, we have certain kind of a creative work and what happens we do not know that there is someone who is copying our work our creativeness is something which is being copied so here that is where these kind of issues come okay suppose if there is a author or if there is a writer so first of all how do we define what a copyright is so whenever we people are talking about a copyright, so copyright can be considered as a legal term used to describe the rights that the creators have over their literary or artistic kind of a work. Because sometimes like wherever we people are talking about internet, so internet is something which can be considered as a plethora of knowledge. So sometimes we have the good information and sometimes we have some kind of information because since it, it has, it is a vast sea. So it internet is something because where we people are talking in context of the internet, it access, it gives a very easy access to the knowledge. So before we come up, we, before we sum up to these kind of a thing, so here, Copyright is a kind of a form of an intellectual property law which protects original work of any kind of a creator or any kind of an author. Here you will see that there is something which is written as an artistic work. So what is that artistic work? Artistic work can be considered as any kind of uh, literary, any kind of a musical or Artistic means it can be painting, it can be drawing, or we can say any kind of an advertisement. Even, even if we people are working in a software company, even a software, computer software has its own copyright. Okay, see, wherever we people are talking about a copyright, all the kinds of the work cannot be copyrighted. There are, that means it doesn't pro protect all the ideas, all the kind of the discoveries, concepts, or theories. But 
sometimes wherever we people are saying like any kind of uh, a software program like python isn't it so any kind of a name any kind of a logo any kind of a slogan all these or or we can say any kind of a domain name any kind of a title so all these things can be copyrighted okay so this what does it mean it means that any speech discoveries musical scores or any ideas have to be written down in any kind of a physical form in order to be protected can be considered as a copyright so here if you will just look into my slide it is being mentioned about the copyright act of 1957 here i am talking about in terms of our country that is india so what does it say so copyright is uh, is a kind of an act of 1957 which says that it refers to the legal right of the owner of of intellectual property so in india copyright act that is act number 14 of 1957 is applicable okay so uh, the things to do for you people is you have to find out that in your country what is the copyright act which you people follow so this is something which is being mentioned over here that means it protects the original literary dramatic musical and artistic cinematograph or a sound recording work from an unauthorized uses that means nobody can copy your work nobody can share anything but there is a slight difference because unlike patents like we have patents so copyright only protects the expression it doesn't protect any idea so there is no copyright of any kind of an idea so that is something which is a meaning of a copyright so here is a kind of a question for you that means you have to check about afghanistan copyright related laws so this is uh, a brainstorming session for you that what are the copyright rule in afghanistan so that is something which you people should be aware of so here why do we need like sometimes what happens as a students when we do our assignments or when we uh do our term papers or any kind of a project we need to consult certain kind of the books certain kind of the articles certain kind of something which is based on the internet so here whatever ideas or language you pick up you must acknowledge all these things that means we cannot cut copy paste we need to acknowledge it so what can be protected from using a copyright isn't it so that is something which is being mentioned that is literary work that means we can protect newspaper articles we can protect computer programs databases we can protect films uh, musical composition all these kind of a things that is something which i had mentioned even the artistic work that means painting drawing any kind of a photograph so all these are copyrighted so these are the things so here why do we need any kind of a copyright law why do we need it why do we require it isn't it so we have two reasons why we need a copyright law first of all it is something which can be considered as the author's right why because copyright protection serves to recognize and protect rather than intense connection authors have the original work which they create so that is something which can be considered as one of the ethical principle because it is the whole soul responsibility that means it is the whole soul we we need to protect what author is trying to produce and somewhere what we are doing we are trying to keep the integrity of the creative work otherwise anyone can copy your work anyone can uh, uh, copy any of your uh, software so that is something which why we require these kind of the laws 
that is that is where we have seen that nobody can reproduce the work which you prepare or nobody can distribute the copies of the work by sale lease or transfer from the ownership perform the work so that is something which can be considered that means if you if you have this kind of a copyright act so that means one has to take your permission okay nobody can display your work as its own as if that means as, uh, as if that work is something which is being done by him so that is something which we have seen that copyright laws provide a kind of an inducement to author or what we can say any kind of a creator because the main aim of this copyright law is to encourage the creation and publication of a new work for the social benefit so that is why so another slide says that who is the copyright owner so automatically the author or the artist his own work or his own company is can be considered that means any company any author any artist who is known for his work in course of his or her employment so that is the copyright owner so here what is copyright infringement it occurs where if someone has copied your work that means the violation of the law okay so here copyright does not give the creator or any kind of an original work to the state the exclusive right for eternity so that is something which is only given for a particular time and that is in which the copyrighted item comes to the public domain so here like suppose uh, there is a kind of a thin line sometimes so it is something which can be considered as a punishable act and in india it uh, it comes under the criminal and the civil penalties that means imprisonment for 6 months or a fine of 550000 rupees for the first of offense the second is imprisonment for the 3 years or a fine of 2 lakhs then it can be uh, sued in the civil court damages and the comprehension for the infringement can be awarded to the copyright owner so if you have copied someone work so that is something where we people can say that yes it goes to the owner you have to pay the price so that is what we people have seen but sometimes what happen there are some kind of a people that means uh, otherwise uh, sometimes what happens people will not put their things into the public domain so interestingly the copyright does not give the creator of the original material or the estate the inclusive right for eternity so that is what it says that means sometimes what happen the copyrighted item comes to the pub public domain like uh, for example if i want to say that there are certain kind of the authors like shakespeare in literature or in uh, wordsworth so if we want to quote some lines from him from their writing so what we do we acknowledge them we say that because these lines are something which are being taken from shakespeare or these lines are something which are uh, quoted from the wordsworth so that is how we present that kind of a uh, material in front of anyone so that is how uh, copyright came into existence now another thing uh, that is uh, which we people are going to talk about uh, that is what is plagiarism so here where we people are talking about a uh, plagiarism so plagiarism is something which can be considered as using someone's some one else work or idea without giving a proper credit sometimes what happens we copy someone work and we do not give a credit to that person we say no all the work which is uh, present right in front of us is something which is being done by us but actually that is not the truth 
So why do uh, all these things are being required? Why do we, what actually uh, plagiarism is? So whenever we people are uh, defining a plagiarism, so uh, plagiarism can be considered as number one, because uh, here where we people are talking about uh, copyright, so copyright is something which is being uh, given to any kind of a software. So sometimes what happens, uh, plagiarism is something which is very rampant in schools or in college, because sometimes people believe that uh, uh, the universal access to the internet could be the main reason behind the decline in academic integrity, especially where we people are talking about plagiarism. Because uh, when we people are students, students like students lead ethical lives. So how we can avoid these kind of plagiarism because plagiarism is something where we people are talking about that we do not give a credit and we are just copying someone's work and we are saying that no it's it's our work that is something so these are the examples of a plagiarism that means quoting someone's work without acknowledging the author as i uh, was talking about that sometimes other uh, books like uh, Shakespeare or Wordsworth. So these are the main, um, very famous dramatist or what we people can say that the pioneer of the poetry. So what we do in, we are copying their work and we are not giving them the credit. We're saying that all these things are being produced by us. So that is something which where we can say that that is a kind of a plagiarized work. That means where we quote someone word without acknowledging the author. See, if someone is uh, trying to join the meeting, please allow that person, uh, the one who is the co-host. So, uh, I, I did, I did, ma'am. Okay, okay, thank I you did. so much, thank you so much. So this is where we people have seen that uh, the another example, the another example is something which can be considered that copying a part of a content of a work into one's own paper without citing the source. That means we are, we are not citing any source. We are saying that, yes, all the kind of the work is something which is being produced by us. So there are so many kind of a definition which constitute plagiarism. And according, because the, in nowadays, research is something which is going on. So sometimes what happens, people copy someone's work and they say that, no, this is the work which is being done by us. That is wrong. That means copying or buying a paper, handling in its one's own. That is falsely, isn't it? Like sometimes some uh, it happens uh, in the field of research. Someone is writing a paper. They're writing a research paper. And that person has published that paper. And the other person, what he's doing, he's quoting his work, he's rewriting his work, and he's saying that uh, this work is uh, without acknowledging the main source, without telling about that I had cited from this person, I had taken some ideas from this uh, place. So that is where we are saying that uh, you might have heard that sometimes. Uh, in my lecture also, I used to say that uh, the content of my uh, presentation is something which I had taken from the Jan Kosh book, which is already available to you. Okay, so that is from where I make the slide. So even uh, something if I present in front of you, I quote that thing that all the content of my lecture is based on the kind of the books which is being available to you. So that is where we, we give a kind of a credit. And that credit in giving the credit is something where we are not talking about the plagiarism. So that is why uh, we say that what plagiarism is all about. Or copying the words. So the, these are something which can be considered as the types of the plagiarism. Sometimes what happens, uh, Sometimes we copy the words or ideas from someone 
else without giving him a due credit or sometimes uh, we fail to put any kind of a quotation mark or sometimes we give incorrect kind of an information so that is how we plagiarize that work because wherever we are talking about what plagiarism is so plagiarism can be considered as a word that is being derived from a latin word that is plagiarious and plagiarious means kidnapper and you know what a kidnapper is kidnapper is that means who takes who kidnaps something isn't it that means it can be defined as passing off another person work as if it were one's own work by claiming credit or something that was actually done by someone else so that is something which can be considered as a plagiarism sometimes what happens a uh, plagiarism may not always be intentional sometimes we do not know we do not know how to quote someone it can be unintentional or sometimes it can be accidental or sometimes it can be self stealing so these are something which can be considered as the types of plagiarism so what is that types of a plagiarism that means complete plagiarism source that is where we are directly taking a kind of a plagiarism and we are directly copying because uh, wherever we uh, you all might have heard about the word that is known as wikipedia is it a yes or a no yes wikipedia? Yeah, no. yeah and sometimes what happens we always and uh, whenever we are writing a research paper or whenever we are uh, giving a kind of a due credit all the teachers or all the professors they will say please don't quote wikipedia because the content which is available in wikipedia is something which is not legalized or which is not authentic it is something where someone will whatever idea he will be having he will be posting it in wikipedia then it can be changed it, it cannot be considered as a authentic source okay so that is where we are saying that whenever we are talking about a plagiarism that means we are where we are just copying a kind of a work and that work and we are not giving a due credit or it can be considered as an auto plagiarism auto plagiarism can be uh, where we ourselves do any kind of a thing without knowing that what we are writing it off any any other is paraphrasing plagiarism where we just copy a kind of a paragraph sometimes what happen whenever we quote a kind of a text so from which text we have taken from which page we have taken we give a kind of a credit that is something which becomes very important that is where we are not plagiarizing if we are copying a kind of a paragraph also that means we have to give a credit because in the end we gave a kind of a work cited where we have to mention that this is something this was the authentic source from where we have given this kind of a writing or written this kind of a paper so that is something which can be considered as the types of the uh, plagiarism sometimes as i was saying you know that these can be accidental so sometimes just because we do not have any kind of a knowledge so as well as a kind of a faulty understanding of a citation or reference uh, referencing any kind of a style that is something which can be considered as an accidental kind of a plagiarism uh, that is again here what is a self plagiarism self plagiarism can be considered as a self published work in some other form without referring to the original form that means where we are claiming that yes this is something which can be considered as my work and actually that is not your work so that is something which can be considered as a self uh, plagiarism then we have a paraphrasing that means uh, changing the grammar 
uh, and even when we people are talking about plagiarism is taking a different kind of a definition because with the implementation of ai tools okay so that is giving a new definition of plagiarism what we are doing we are just changing the line we are just copying that kind of a line and then what we are doing we are just changing the sentence or we are just changing the grammar and then we are saying that yes this is a kind of a work which is done by us so these these are something that means uh, that means where we are saying that paraphrasing is changing the grammar similar meaning of a word or reordering a sentence that is something which can be considered as a paraphrasing kind of a plagiarism another is that means inaccurate authorship in inaccurate authorship can be considered as where we do not uh, we are not giving that means quotation is something which is given by someone else or some other kind of an author and we are claiming that no we are the author so that is something which can be considered as an authorship inaccurate authorship okay then uh, comes a kind of a uh, mosaic plagiarism or accidental plagiarism that means where we do not know that um, just because of the faulty understanding of the citation we are present presenting it in a different kind of a form then uh, there is a kind of using certain kind of a program code or what we can say any kind of an algorithms or functions without any permission or reference so that is also something which can be considered as a code plagiarism so these are sometimes or uh, some some types of uh, the plagiarism uh, next is uh, what is a complete plagiarism that means research researchers take someone's manuscript or study and submit it under his own name so that is something which is that is something when people are yeah i have a question sorry uh, we now we study the the second uh, mm. the 11th chapter yeah mm. yeah and, yeah what about the others we studied uh, about the telephone communication job application group discussion we studied mm -hmm. before yeah we have studied we have done it oh okay okay i'm so sorry so i'm absent uh, yeah. you lecture. were absent in my earlier lecture see all my lectures are online so if you are not able to attend that lecture you can uh, go through the online one so since all our lectures are being recorded so you can watch that one because all these things are done because last time i had given an assignment also and that assignment assignment was something which was based on a question that all the students have to make their own resume or a cv and they have to submit it i don't know how many of them have worked or not but that things are already being discussed so okay. here here okay. this is where okay is there any other doubt no uh, just i you said uh, you have a record the lessons yeah yeah uh, we have recorded the sessions yeah um please send me the link uh, after the uh, lesson is finished yes yeah it is available in rc dehradun and uh, this is uh, these are online available so if you if you have skipped anything so you can just go through those lectures mm, okay thank you okay okay so that is uh, that is where we people are talking about uh, uh, is there any other doubt okay i don't think so that there is any silence no, no question Excuse me, ma'am. Okay. There's no doubt, but I think yeah. some blocks are remain still. Uh, this is the last, last, uh, last one that you studied. No, uh, no. See, these blocks are a little bit mixed one. Okay. Yes. So we are discussing all those things because today what we are doing, we are discussing block number two. For presentation, yes. we have already discussed that yes, for presentation. In, in, what we in are going black to do? Num in black number two, you are. Uh, studying unit 11 but the nine eight seven are remain i think so 
Yeah, yeah, I know. First of all, I started up with a meeting. From the last one, okay. The first one. Okay. The block that is given on the first, that means unit number six, I was talking about meeting. After that, I came to the copyright. Then I'm talking about the plagiarism. Then I'm going to talk about what are the work ethics, what are the etiquettes, all these things. And apart from that, I will be talking about that. We know that what are the things which I have to cover with you people. Okay. All these things I'm going to talk. It's a long session. It's only three. Uh, that means uh, here, as per India's time, it's 3.15. And as per your time, I think, what is the time right now? 2.15. Yeah. Yeah, the 2.15. See, so we will be continuing the lecture. Your session is still 3.30. Okay. As for me, it's 4.30. Okay. So we are going to discuss all those things. And if then also first let me complete the whole thing, then only I will be talking about. Uh, then you talk, then you say that what are the points which are still uh, required to discuss. Okay. So these are uh, these are important segments where we be the point which I'm talking right now is that means the plagiarism. This plagiarism is something which is a very important part. It's given in block number 11. I know I'm, I am I have fully gone through the text which is being given to you people. So accordingly, I had prepared my slides. Okay? So we have a long way to go. So after this, I will not wind up my lecture. We have so many things to discuss. So this is where we are talking about the complete plagiarism. They are just non-sequential up and down, but you will go with the flow. So here, where we people are talking about the plagiarism, so that is where the, it, it happens when people go for the research work. So there are so many pieces. In India, we have Shod Ganga. So from where you can access any kind of a thesis, any kind of a work which is being written by any kind of a research scholar and taking that thesis and just writing, claiming it as your own work and getting a PhD degree is actually objectionable. And that is something which can be considered as a complete plagiarized kind of a work. Then again, uh, source based plagiarism. So what is a source based plagiarism when a res researcher reference of a source is incorrect and it does it or it doesn't exist exist. Sometimes what happens when we quote any kind of a text from an Internet. So it is auto generated that if we are quoting any kind of a website or any kind of an Internet, it will come in a blue asked blue underlined form. You cannot quote it anyhow. So that means underlined form of any kind of a reference which you have taken from an internet source is something which can be considered as an authenticated kind of a citation. Sometimes we quote these kind of things, but the blue line doesn't turn up or if we click on that line, there will be a kind of an error which will come. So it shows that the source which we are using is misleading so that is something again direct plagiarism can be considered as word for a word transcript of someone else work without attribution or any kind of a quotation mark this is something which is auto plagiarism that means submission of own previous work or mixed part of a previous work without permission from all the professors involved so that is something which can be considered as an auto plagiarism Next is paraphrasing. I told you that we are just giving a kind of a minor changes in a sentence. We are using it as our own. Then comes an inaccurate authorship. An inaccurate authorship is something where an individual contributes to the manuscript but does not get a credit. That is, individual get a credit without contributing to the work. That means authorship, we are claiming the authorship someone else for and we are giving our name. So that is, this is something which is considered as a mosaic plagiarism. That means where a student borrows a phrases from a source without using any kind of a quotation mark and finds a synonymous 
synonyms for the author's language while keeping the main structure and meaning. Okay, so just changing the text, just changing the topic, and we are coding it. That is accidental, as I told you earlier, where we misquote any kind of a verb. So that is something that, that we do not know how to cite, how to quote, and then we are talking about. So these, this is something, what, uh, what are the counterfacts which are responsible? That means if we are using, that means moral and intellectual reasons to avoid plagiarism, because if we plagiarize any kind of a work, it damages your reputation, your professional career. There is a kind of a loss of dignity Okay, there are so many kind of a sources. That means if uh, you go through any kind of a journal or a research paper, you will find with the professors that they have so many kind of a research paper they have published. So what they will do, they will quote it, they will mention it. Okay, and uh, how many people are citing that work? Like uh, we have uh, academia. So uh, there, if someone is quoting your work, you get to know that or as a research scholar so that is where in internet also you are um, publishing your work if you get number of citations so you get the kind of a credit okay so that is something it it, it it is something which is responsible for the loss of dignity so that is where we should avoid the plagiarism and even what happens nobody will trust us if we will copy someone's work, then people will have a kind of a doubt on us. It will question our reputation. That means he, why, who is the one, why he has done things like that is where we can say that plagiarism, we should, well, we are using it. So we we'll, how to avoid a plagiarism? These are something which is very, very important. That is where it comes. That means what are the general rules, how we people can avoid plagiarism. We can avoid plagiarism by quotations, by quoting, by paraphrasing, by summary, by summarizing. Okay, so that is how we people can show it. So that is where it mentions that quotation must be identical to the original use using a narrow segment of a source. Okay, so these, this is how we can avoid paraphrase. That means we involve putting a passage from a source material in your own word. And summarizing involves putting the main ideas in your own words, including only the main point. So that is what are the exact word of the author. Try to avoid using long passage as direct quotes. So we cannot quote it. We should avoid these kind of the long passage. So this should always we should use a kind of a quotation mark. That is something which is being required. And if we are quoting someone's work or if we are so for that it is very very important that we use um, quotation mark either the we should quote it so that is within double inverted comma we are going to use it that means stated the particular author in this particular book have mentioned it and then we are quoting it within using the double inverted comma and then we are writing that kind of a statement and then finally we are just closing it. So that is how we mention. Okay, and whenever we are quoting these things, so always remember we should cite a source. So that is something which is very, very important. Next is, that means paraphrasing means where we are using it in our own words. In our own words means reread the passage. Write it in your own words. Jot down few words and then sometimes take out the original passage and check your retentions. Use a kind of a quotation mark 
and record it in a form of your own source. So that is something that means how we can uh, summarize shorter or a longer piece of a writing for that they have given read, reread, annotate the material, then write it one sentence summary of each sections in a text or we can use many author or tags. So then what happens no, whenever we are writing a kind of a research work, we do not know that how many work we have copied. And nowadays we have certain kind of the, uh, the websites or certain kind of the softwares which can say that how much work is your plagiarized. Even in the research field, only 10% plagiarism is acceptable. Why 10 to 20% because where we are quoting any kind of a definition where if I say that, okay, uh, like, what do you mean by uh, plagiarism? So plagiarism can be considered as the word that means Latin word which has come from this. So that means that we are quoting it, we are mentioning it. So that is where we are defining it. So that is we have to rewrite as rewrite it in a original form. So that is something, but we quote it within double inverted comma. So that that is that will come under plagiarism, but there we are citing that work, we are mentioning that work. Okay, so that is first of all, we have to draft and we have to check and rewrite it. So that is see that if i uh, whatever presentation if i had used so i had also quoted the sources that these are the sources which the people have done next comes to the work ethics and the social media etiquette so the next slide which i'm going to present in front of you next topic that is work ethic what is a work ethic and what are social media Etiquettes. So this is something which becomes very, very important. So we are going to talk about that also. So when we come, uh, so in this slide, there are few things which we people will be talking about. What are ethics? Because see, whenever we quote, whenever we copy someone work, so that is our credentials no, which is being questioned okay so what are ethics so this is something which becomes very very important what are ethics what are work ethics so first of all we have to understand there is a kind of a code of conduct ethic is something which defines which tells us that uh, we have a kind of a code at of conduct we have a kind of a right attitude towards our own work okay so that means we cannot um, harm anyone we have to be honest with our work okay so these are something which can be considered as the ethics because ethic is something which is a very essential thing wherever we are working so that is uh, that is how we are going to be. Nobody can trust any kind of an unethical person. Sometimes what are ethical values? What are unethical practices? All these things we are going to discuss. Okay. So in this, first of all, what is a work ethic? So work ethic, see, one is your ethic and another one is morale what are your morals those are two different things got it morally we are different we know we can judge and there is a very thin line which differentiate between these kind of things one is morality and another one is ethics sometimes what happens like you be the boss of a company and since you being the boss, you being the CEO, CEO of a particular company and uh, your classmate is one of your worker in your company. Now what happens? He was a very good friend of yours. Since you are the CEO, you have to look after the company. 
and every day what that person is doing every day he is not coming on time so as a person what will you do he being a good friend of yours he being your childhood friend but in the company he is making a kind of a different kind of an impression every day he is coming late so as a ceo of a company what you will do will you punish him will you just fire him or will you give him a warning that is a question what you are going to do okay so that is something which comes that means there is a very thin line that means am i audible can you hear me ma'am yes ma'am yes yes madam okay 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 so see as i told you that means there is a very thin line between ethic and your morality he being a very good friend of mine but every day is coming late me being a ceo of a company what example i will set for the other people so that is something which can be considered as an ethic so ethic is something which is that means where it is a standard of a conduct and a set of values inside the workplace which includes right attitude correct behavior respect for others and effective communication in a workplace so that is how we define a work ethic because by define by the definition business ethics refer to the standards of morally right or wrong conduct in business sometimes when we people are talking about legal terms organization every organization have legal and ethic so that doesn't mean ethic is something which goes beyond the law which goes beyond the mor morals okay so that is why it is outlining the acceptable behavior beyond government organizations control so that is why first of all we have to understand the link between what are the ethics and how we people will be accepting those kind of work ethics and how because these days all the companies insist on high integrity they talk about the honesty for both the employees and the leader so that is why any kind of a company can have a kind of a profit so first of all ethic is something which is being linked to the customer loyalty and it is something which cultivates a kind of a trust and it strengthens the branding and the sales and finally it gives you a kind of a profit so that is what we people have seen so first of all where we people are talking about what ethic is so a simple definition because where we people are talking about an ethic ethic can be considered as a greek concept that means ethos and ethos means a characteristic or a spirit of attitude of a company people and system so here where we people are talking about an ethic so ethic means what kind of nature we people are doing that means what kind of the work whether we are giving a kind of an integrity that means ethics at work should actually be no different in ethics in your private life because if we are loyal so that means we will be having a kind of a loyalty towards our own company but sometimes this is this is something where we we uh work ethic is something which can be considered as a kind of a universal norm and how you make feel
someone feel personally accountable and responsible for a kind of a work which he is doing because see every company is dependent on any kind of a thing is dependent on the employee so workplace ethics these are few things which they are mentioning that means attendance teamwork respect honesty fairness because there are so many things that means wherever we people are talking about there are interpersonal skills which are responsible apart from that initiative and how much dependable you are these are something which can be considered as the characteristics of the work ethic because wherever we people are talking about what are interpersonal skills interpersonal skills and how we people can improve our interpersonal skills so interpersonal skills can be included in a form of a habit it can be included in a form of an attitude manner appearance and behavior which informs our dealing with the people so that is something which can be considered as an interpersonal skill how do we cooperate because organizational performance is efficiency how efficient we are how effectively we are doing our work what is our productivity what kind of the quality work we are giving okay and whether we are able to achieve the kind of the goals or not so for these the things which are responsible over here are the government policy and the individual values so wherever we people are talking about interpersonal skills so interpersonal skills means that how we behave i started uh, this uh, slide with a kind of a question where i said that think yourself as a ceo of a company and the classmate of your who was a very good friend when you were there in school is now a employee in your company and every day he is not coming on time being a ceo what you are going to do i'm repeating my question again that is an ethical question what is your ethics what your ethics will say and what employee ethic will say that question you all have to answer this is a kind and once i will finish this one this topic indefinitely before coming to the another topic i will ask you this question you have to give me the answer that doesn't mean that the teacher is going to speak and speak and speak and i will not get any kind of a response from my students are you hearing me yes and no no yes 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 thank madam. you so much okay 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 so here what does it mean so you people are aware of my question ha huh? you people are aware so here what we have seen that means the interpersonal skill so interpersonal skill is something that means the immediate reaction to the people whom we meet that means when either it can be our family members it can be our friends or it can be our observation in the society what our upbringing is okay that is something which builds up our interpersonal skills nobody can say that televisions or movies play a very important role in shaping our sometimes what happens we get we watch certain kind of the things we are influenced with certain kind of the characters but what our interpersonal skills are we always inherit it because where we are saying our appearance our personality it is something which is based that is a biological process that is something which is based on our genes but our interpersonal skills are sometimes which are based on the society our upbringing our friends our family but sometimes what we can do we can improve also okay if we are aware or we are not unaware of certain kind of the interpersonal skills we can develop it we can improve it and once we are once we are aware of all our things then what we can do we can reshape it and with a kind of a positivity we can influence our relationship with other people also because uh whenever we are working in a kind of a company these interpersonal skills are something which are very very required 
okay so that is something which is important next is something which is initiative initiative is something where we are saying that uh it is a very important characteristic that means sometimes there is no direct kind of a supervision we we are not being supervised but sometimes if we do not have take any kind of an initiative we do not want to do any kind of a thing what we do we procrastinate our work and what we do we, again and again we are procrastinating our work then what happens our performance becomes poor we do not have any kind of an objective sometimes what happens we miss our opportunity which creates a kind of a problem for us so since we people are not able to uh, prove our worth so that can lead to a kind of a failure so that is where uh, this thing also becomes very very important so the next is uh, where we people are uh, talking about instead of delaying any kind of a thing how properly we people are functioning how we people are doing our things that is something which is important another thing it is very important for those who work out of a home or office or even though if they are in, uh, run a small business if do not if they do not exercise any kind of an initiative they will it will reduce their success so sometimes our effort and our drive both are important we need to take any kind of an initiative like uh, whenever we conduct a kind of a class so there are so many students who volunteer that yes we can be the co-host that is something which can be considered as a leadership quality that means ki yes we can go on with the session we can accept we can allow the other people also to join or join the class so all these things are being noted these are very small kind of the examples so that is something which is important another thing that they, that is again can be considered as one of your interpersonal skills that what kind of a quality you have okay so that is there so and the third point which i was talking about was whether you are dependable so dependability means whether you are honest whether uh, you are being valued what is your reliability whether you reach the place to uh, be be on time that means your attendance people who are not dependable and they can cause some extra expenditure emergencies or the waste of the time and resources so that is sometimes if um, these kind of the lack of dependability can also lo uh, that means can lead to a very serious kind of a consequences and that is something which can have a kind of a major loss so that is why we are we are saying that your personal characteristics in a workplace so these are something which are your personal characteristic that means whenever we are talking about your skills so that means whenever you are hiring any kind of an employee the employer should be aware of these kind of the fact that the, that means the employer should have good communication skill he should have a positive attitude he should have an ability to be dependable he should be punctual he should be responsible so all these are something which can be considered as a good quality and every organization needs these kind of a people how you dress up what is your dressing sense whether that means how you look whether you are polite whether you have a kind of a confidence all these things are required in a workplace okay so that is what we people have discussed in work ethics these are the workplace ethics which are required that means your attendance that means the code of a conduct code of a conduct can be what are your standards what are your moral standards what you practice all these things are important so this is 
that means what is your interpersonal interpersonal skills what you are originally is something what is your personality is something which is being reflected in your workplace if you are organized if you are disciplined if you have a kind of a tendency friendly tendency that means to work in a team work if you respect everyone see respect is something which is which any person doesn't get we do not get it is not granted respect is something which we earn it is not something which we get in a form of a command got it so that is that means how we behave what is our work attitude what is our discipline so all these things are something which are required in a kind of a work place these are something which comes as a work ethic so uh, there are certain kind of a questions which are important that means what are the work ethics what are the good that means if a worker is there what are his good work ethics what are the three major characteristics of a work ethic all these things are important and again there are some questions which are given in your textbooks also and that is does our family or environment influence our interpersonal skill how so these are very simple simple kind of a question but these are very very important so that is where it mentions that attendance that means see again again uh, the question which uh, i had already given that means to do kind of a thing that means where we people were talking about uh, one thing that means uh, ethics being a ceo that question just keep that question inside your mind because any time you are the only one who have to uh, give the answer of this question okay so attendance is something which is very mandatory that is how many you people are coming you have to be present every day in your workplace you have to be punctual that means punctuality matters it counts that means you cannot make other person wait uh, being in the workplace on time every work day utilizing the full work time that means instead of doing something else instead of wasting your time how you are utilizing your time is something which is important attendance and productivity that means the more time for the production being able to utilize the full work time on increase regular production okay team work so what is a team work so all these things are being defined very systematically that means team work can be considered as a cooperative and a coordinated effort on a part of a group of a person who work together as a team so that means the ability to get along with others including those whom employee don't necessarily like Okay. so how ability to manage people that is your team work because see if you are leading a kind of a team and in your team you have six members i'm giving you an example and all those six members so that means if any if you are a team lead and you have to deal with six members six people they are your team members just keep this thing in mind that they you have to deal with six different personalities six different mind six six different thinking and it is the quality of a team leader that how he is going to make them work how he is going to work them where we are not sure that two different minds will be all the minds will be working on a same pace this is your ability to get along with the people maybe there is a kind of a misunderstanding how you are going to deal with those people carrying your own weight and helping others who are struggling so that is something which can be considered as a team work so team work and productivity can be even the best qualified individual cannot have all these kind of skills to do individual strength and skills are combined with the teamwork 
so the more can be achieved by a collective kind of a work rather than an individual kind of a work okay so if you will do any kind of a work you will be labored you will be burdened so teamwork means good production more productive ideas so new ideas can be generated that means if we are working in a form of a team so that means we are working with six different mindsets how we are organizing them how we are reshaping them how we are making them work is something that you people am i audible am i audible yes yes ma'am okay okay so if you are dealing with certain kind of the people so that is how so that means now next comes the integrity so the goal of any organization is to have the employee behave in a manner consistent with the company mission and goal so now what is your goal what is your objective what is the company's goal so we have to be very honest we have to be reliable so we have the values so those values we have to share with our company so that is adhering a code a code of ethics so that is how that is our integrity that is how we are personal personally how we are and how we are producing it in our workplace how we are reflecting it in our workplace so that is something which can be considered as integrity so integrity means that means sometimes what happens if someone is absent okay that means unwanted un uh, warranted breaks someone is taking total number of breaks or stealing the organizational property covering to be the equipment for a personal use or gossiping about a company or organization all these are not the good ethics these are not good things and it will not lead the organization in a proper manner okay so the organization level of productivity is directly proportional to the employee level so the more he is committed the more satisfied the company is so that is why all these things are correlated even the integrating values of integrity to day to day promotes the employees ethical behavior so that is something which is important uh, one more thing if someone is honest we have to give a credit to that person getting my point we cannot discredit if someone is working hard we have to give that person credit sometimes if we are not giving a credit the enthusiasm of that person get lost okay so that means even even the employer should give a kind of a credit to his employee so that is something which will boost him up so that is there so work attitude a settled way of thinking feeling and behaving at a workplace so we cannot be harsh we cannot use uh, unacceptable work words so that is there that means the acceptable and unacceptable evaluation of a particular person people object which events happening or ideas so that is something which are important in a work ethic each individual worker has a different attitude of a work everyone knows to do everyone has a different strategy whenever we are doing any kind of a work no that doesn't mean that we are going to work on a same pace if we are dealing if in a classroom we have 20 students so that means we are dealing with 20 different thinking 20 different minds and no singular mind will think in a similar pattern every mind is different every thinking is different so that means all the ideas that means we have 20 new ideas in a class getting my point so that is how every worker has a different level of attitude so the work should be 
appreciated so that is something which becomes important so that means attitude pays a way of a behavior action so which gives a kind of a productiveness if you give a kind of a freedom that means sometimes there are certain kind of the organizations which gives certain kind of a freedom they enhance enhancing your productivity is something which is also very important so that is we cannot uh, give them overload them we cannot burden any person with a kind of a work so that definitely if we will overburden someone if we do not yeah, behave in a very proper manner or um, unfavorable kind of a work attitude can push the factor behind in an individual attitude and that could lead a kind of a result that means a poor relationship with a really leader or a manager or lack of recognition sometimes that is why i said na, if someone is doing a good work we should always appreciate that good work we should always give him a kind of a credit that is something which is very required that is a positive feedback if we are not utilizing it it will create a kind of an inequality okay or inconsistent promotion and payment of a salary salary or something that means it should be based on the kind of a performance okay even even that means lack of training so that means there should be something which should be given that means if someone is doing good work so he should also he or she should also get a kind of a so that is so that is again a self discipline that means how to that means ability to control our own desires and impulse and stay focused is something which is important for a goal to reach a goal so that is an art of a self control self reliance or self determination is something which is important so that is where it stimulates an individual or sustain to sustain his or her decision or an individual towards achieving the sets of goal so that is where the self discipline that means if that means every organization requires that means one should be disciplined if he is self disciplined then only he will be able to do work then only he will be able to concentrate on the work so that is why discipline also become an important thing if there is no self discipline among the worker so that means there will be a negativity there will be a lack of enthusiasm and automatically it will hamper on the productivity of any kind of a company so any kind of a self discipline is something which promotes a strong relationship and it raises a kind of a positive environment that uh, is dedicate that shows a kind of a dedication and devotion amongst the employees employees so these are the employee commitments that means uh, because employee can the commitment is a bond of a employee that uh, experience with their organization and that is employee commitment is whether he is attached whether he is loyal dedicated and connected and definitely it will take towards the productivity of any other company so these are the quotation and this is a kind of a quotation by uh, uh, kant and what he says act in such a way that you always treat humanity whether in your own person or in a person of any other never simply as means but always at the same time as an end so what does it says that means it is respect everyone okay so that means respect is defined as consideration for the self and other so that means if we can respect others then other will also respect us so that is something which it says so if this thing is there so that means it contributes a kind of a job satisfaction it increases the employee engagement 
creates a kind of a fair environment. If we are not showing any kind of a respect, that means definitely there will be a kind of a stress. It doesn't create a kind of a fair environment. So all these things are required. It, impro it improves a kind of a knowledge sharing and even boost enthusiasm. So all these things are something which are responsible for a kind of a creativeness. So that is there. So again, the fairness and the productivity, that is the fundamental, that means common rules, equal footing, voice, credit, care. All these are something which are important um, marks of uh, the productivity. So these are all related to each other. So now I'm coming to a conclusion. So that is, for a high productivity, it is important for all the employees to observe the ethical conduct and how to deal with one other, another. So that becomes very, very important. So the uh, now I will come to my next slide. And the next one is, that is ethics and etiquettes on our social media. So since we people have discussed about the ethics at the workplace my question was i mean since uh, now i think you people will be there with your answers you might have uh, jotted out with your answers that you being a ceo of a company and if someone who is your classmate comes late every day what are you going to do as a CEO of a company because that person is setting a kind of a bad examples for the other workers? So, what will be your answer? Anyone? No answer? No answer for. Okay. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Please, uh, you have. I think you have a question. Yes. Yeah. I asked this question three times. Since please. I was talking about ethics in workplace, so I was talking about all these things where I was talking about uh, the integrity, where I was talking about the values, where I was talking about the self-respect. I was talk. I was talking about so many things. So there I had given yes, a kind yes. of a condition and the condition was that you being a CEO of a company and your, mm. you being the employer and the employee which is there in your company is your classmate who have studied with you in your school. So every day what he is doing he is coming late. So my question to you is that if he is coming late regularly and he is setting a kind of a bad example, being the representative of your institute, of your company, what action you will take against him? Whether you take a kind of an action or being a friend of yours, what, what will be your, what will you do? That is the question. Yes, uh, when the, when that time our friend or our colleagues uh, when come late or not attend on official time, on that time we yeah. we uh, we uh, we must be uh, said uh, to he uh, didn't do yeah. this action. So this is uh, this, so this is uh, we can say this is uh, not. Uh, not good action so sometimes uh, when our colleagues do this other stuff will maybe do that so our organization have a performance yeah when every organization have a uh, uh, goals we not achieve mm -hmm. that goals or uh, we can say we not uh, uh, do everyday work or uh, done everyday work like this Definitely a very beautiful answer which has been given by you. Uh, that, uh, uh, you went uh, very technical. Okay. So that was a very beautiful answer. 
so that is uh, something which we can sum up that that uh, that is a very very valid answer that if uh, being a friend of us that is our personal relationship with that employee being an employer we are yeah. the ceo so what we are supposed to do we have to give him a warning that this is this is setting a kind of a bad example even though you are friends with me personally but for the organization you are an employee so you are the employer of this one so that means what you have to do you have to behave properly and with a kind of a warning we will give this kind of a example we will set a example to our other uh, people also that this is uh, the organization is something which is not based on a personal relationship but it is something where we are talking about the equality everyone every uh, employee is someone who is treated in a proper manner so that was a very beautiful answer from yours so now i'm coming to the next question and uh, the next topic and the next topic is ethics and social uh, etiquette on a social media see uh, nowadays there are so many things which are happening on, on the social media because there we people are talking about how we are going to define a social media so social media can be considered uh, it can be a kind of a collective term for the websites and the application which focus on communication community based input interaction content sharing and collaboration so that is how we define a social media so that is where social media means it is a term for a website or any kind of an app that allow people to communicate like it can be any kind of a thing like a uh, forum micro blogging social networking social bookmarking is at the common types of the social media because where we people are talking about social media we have these kind of a social media in a mobile uh, phones also that means uh, the kind of the access which we have to the mobile application that can be like twitter like facebook like linkedin insta anything so all these that means how uh, because personally we as an individual we may meet but through social media we stay in touch and, and interact with our family members but uh, what we do we used to communicate with uh, with the people who are from the different places or from uh, or the people who are from the different communities so that is how we people are utilizing and whenever uh, we are in a kind of a business company or whenever we are expanding our business or whenever we are holding certain kind of the meetings so there also social media plays a very important uh, role because it becomes a kind of a market to promote any kind of the product so that is how social media is something which is coming on a kind of a very popular demand so when we people are talking about that what are the types of the social medias what are the different types so this, these are some of the examples which are there so these are the examples which are been given to you so that can be the popular kind i will be just explaining because you are much more better than me you know that because everyone is aware of all these kind of the things i mean facebook that is something which can be considered as a free social networking website and that is how we used to upload our uh, photos and videos and we keep in touch with our family members or with our friends we have twitter twitter is something which can be considered as uh, a micro blogging service and that is where we can in the form of a tweet we can broadcast our thoughts i was talking about wikipedia so wikipedia can be considered as it is again a kind of a free open content online encyclopedia which is uh, being created through collaborative effort of the community 
that is known as Wikipedians. So that means it is a kind of a collaborative work. So that is why the information is something which is being shared by the content of an article can be published over there. Then we have LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, again, it is a kind of a social networking site. And that is something which is specially designed for the business community. We have another one that is what can be considered as the Reddit. The Reddit is a kind of a social news uh, website and a forum where the stories can be curated and promoted by any kind of the site members. So the site is something which is being composed by so many kind of a communities which are known as subreddits. Then we have Pinterest. So Pinterest is something which can be find, found online and uh, its main focus is something which is there that can be considered as on the pictures. So all these are there uh, which can be considered as the social media. Now comes what are social media etiquette. So sometimes what happens, we access this social media, most of the people they either will access it through the mobile phones or the computer system or the laptop or any kind of the internet connection so this is how they will either they will follow it or they will unfollow it and earlier there were no any kind of the rules and regulations but now social media etiquette is something which refers to the guidelines that companies and individuals used to preserve their reputation online. Okay, so that is something why we require a social media. So that means what is a social media etiquette? Because since we are saying that uh, nowadays what is happening, everything is being posted online. Everything is online and social media is something which is becoming a kind of a channel which uh, it is uh, through which uh, in this kind of a modern world we are just coming uh, there are no any kind of uh, social rules over there and um, people are finding their ways into a kind of a digital environment so here also we need a kind of an etiquette that means how people should behave in a real world as well as through this kind of the word because that is where social media etiquette is something which revolves online and that is why there are certain kind of the guidelines which is being required to follow the social media etiquette so these are certain kind of the things this is these are the points which we have uh, which i had pinned so these are the points that means whenever we are using uh, the social media, so there are certain kind of the etiquette, there are certain kind of the manuals which are required. That means we should post the relevant content, keeping the, in mind what our audience is. Because once we are knowing, we have to take into consideration that how is our audience, what is the mindset of our audience, we should be identifying ourselves. Then only we can share and we should be very aware that what we are posting and what we are not posting. And the next point is we are not supposed to post everything on social media. What does it mean? It means we cannot post all our personal life or our day-to-day -day activities on social media. That is not required. Okay. Then we should build a kind of a reputable image in a social media because um, it is a good practice because what we are posting creates a kind, portrays our profile, it portrays our identity. So we should be very aware that we should construct a kind of a reputable image. Another thing is we should avoid over automation. So what is this automation? 
over automation. So over automation is something that means uh, while we schedule our post in advance, so uh, automating analytics is helpful. We don't automate everything, okay? Because we automatically we will do something which is very wrong. So still there, there is a kind of a place where we actually need a human touch. We should not be overly promotional. That means sometimes as I, as I was telling you that through the social media, like where we are handling Twitter, LinkedIn, these are the same kind of the business profile where we are just um, sharing our information or we are making our business deals. So what does it mean? It means that sometimes uh, uh, the customers, what sometimes we constantly message. So we should avoid these kind of the thing that we, are, we deal with the customer or buy our product or share our page. So that is something that is something which is being um, the which deals with a kind of a social promotional kind of that means uh, there we are thinking about about our own promotion so which is something which is wrong so we should avoid all these things another thing, don't post to be a friend okay don't post to be a friend what does it mean it means that uh, we cannot ask anyone we cannot say that uh, Uh, we cannot approach any stranger and we cannot ask them to be friends with us. So we should be aware of this thing, who is our friend and who is not our friend. Don't show hatred or post hatred message. So that is, we cannot have an opinionated kind of a mind. That means social media should be a kind of a platform to initiate a meaningful discussion in order to promote a better communication. We cannot place anything on a vent of uh, anger or any or something or someone. That means uh, we should avoid these kind of, uh, um, it creates a kind of a toxic, so toxicity or uh, it spreads a kind of a negativity. So that is something expected. And uh, another point is that uh, say no to the cyber bullying. So that means sometimes uh, uh, every social media user should be responsible and he should be mature enough to oppose and not be a part of a cyber bullying because it is something because you should be always be sensitive when you are interacting with someone on the social media and you should treat them as the way you would like to be treated. So that is important. Don't spread fake news. So that is because sometimes what happens, there are certain kind of content which is very, very online. So it is our responsibility not to mislead everyone. We are not supposed to share uh, the uh, any kind of a fake news online. And the last one is we have to value privacy and copyright because if we are quoting something, so that means copyright issues are something which is very, very important. And because here where we people are talking about social media, so here we can share our work, but we should be sure to ask any kind of a permission and that is why we have to take care of the copyright and plagiarism issues. So that is something which is very, very important. And uh, where we people are talking about the privacy. So in order to keep a good reputation online, it is also important to uh, keep anything personal private. So we have to keep all our personal information safe because then it will keep us it will protect us from online kind of a fraud or any kind of a theft so that is why 
how we people can use these things. So that means all our content should be safe and uh, how we are using our content. So that is also very, very important. So these are uh, certain kind of the social uh, media etiquettes. And this is something which we should always avoid. We should not use any kind of a foul language or any kind of an op offensive image that is not required, that is not being considered as a social media etiquette. Another thing is we should use our professional group to advertise our own business. That means that we should not do, that means we should not advertise our any kind of of a personal ventures. Another thing, um, if you cannot take it back, you that means that means you have to respect others. Okay, that is something which is very very important. Another thing is that um, you should always avoid negative comments or any kind of of all foul language. So all these things are there. And it is okay to ignore a friend request. It's not required that you have plenty of friends in your Facebook list. It's not required. If you can untag yourself or ask someone to delete photos of yourself. So if you don't like the content, you can untag it. Unfriend someone who doesn't make you who makes you uncomfortable. So we have this kind of a facility. If we do not like someone's opinion, it's better to unfriend it. So that is all these things are important. So um, my this slide is also done. So that will be, uh, I think the time is also done. So here, this is what we people have listed today. We have talked about the copyright issues we have talked about what are the contents which are required wherever we are holding a kind of a meeting and then we people were uh, talking about uh, the interpersonal skin skills which are required for a kind of a work ethic that means how honesty how integrity are something which are required then we people we are talking about uh, the etiquettes in the social media so I think I had completed um, the number of portions which were required. So now I I just I'm just stopping my give me a minute. Yes. So is there any question which anyone have to ask? Any question from your side? Uh, thank you, Mom. Mm, uh, I don't have any questions. See, sometimes, yeah, sometimes what happens if uh, the students are saying no questions, so that means you have understood the whole concept or you haven't understood anything. So what shall I understand? Uh, yes, uh, the lesson is so good and uh, today lesson so i ask about uh, which chapter we study for this uh, so we open the chapter on that time you uh, you lecture right uh, this is uh, interesting for us and we catch some thing uh, uh, our lesson and thank you everything is okay and we know about uh, more thing about work work ethics what is work plus ethics uh, and organization performance, uh, so more things. Thank you. Um, thank you can so you, much. Yeah, can you hear, ma'am? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, can you please uh, share the pro, uh, uh, PPTs that you yeah, that, hear? Yeah, yeah that you have lectures I will, I, here. Yeah, in the in our group, in our WhatsApp group. Yeah, actually, uh, the lectures which I'm taking are recorded online also. So what you people can do, you can just go through it as well as I will be uh, sharing my uh, PPT with you people that can be done from my side.
Yeah, PPT is really important because it's summarized very well. And also another question, will we have another session or it's finished? Class. Uh, see, we have this, this one. See, this one is the last session because I was having only three sessions with you people. Yes. So in which I had to complete uh, the two blocks. So maximum things I had done, uh, the rest which is being left is uh, the practical session and the practical session that means the presentations where I would like to take the presentation. So um, there are two sessions which are being required, but for that I had to ask the regional center people. So whatever they will say, I will uh, do accordingly because they are the one who are going to. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. you for yeah, it will be nice if you share the PPTs. Uh, very yeah, definitely, soon. Thank definitely. You. I will share it with the regional center and they will uh, share it with you people. Okay, well, thank you. Apart, okay, apart from there, is there any other question? Okay, so since there is no question, let me see if uh, there is any kind of a question in the chat box. Okay, so there are no such any kind of questions. So that will be all for today. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thank you everyone for listening me so patient. With a patience. Thank you so much. Thank you.